President Trump is set to take the stage any minute now at a rally in Evansville, Indiana. We'll take that live when it begins. A lot going on tonight. There was a lot going on all day, and it started early. The feud between the president and the news media who cover him reached a new peak, or maybe valley. It began with a tweet storm early from the West Wing, the barrage, 6.50 a.m. when it started. The first tweet read this way. The hatred and extreme bias of me by CNN has clouded their thinking and made them unable to function. But actually, as I've always said, this has been going on a long time. Little Jeff Z has done a terrible job. His ratings suck, and AT&T should fire him to save credibility. Little Jeff is a reference to Jeff Zucker, who is five foot six and runs CNN. Twelve minutes later, the president continued this way, quote, What's going on at CNN is happening to different degrees at other networks, with NBC News being the worst. The good news is that Andy Lackey is about to be fired for incompetence and much worse. When Lester Holt got caught fudging my tape on Russia, they were hurt badly. In a third tweet, the president wrote that he, quote, cannot state strongly enough how totally dishonest much of the media is. Truth doesn't matter to them. They have only their hatred and agenda. This includes fake books, which come out on me all the time, always anonymous sources and are pure fiction, enemy of the people. In a subsequent tweet, the president noted that CNN, quote, is working frantically to find their source, look hard because it doesn't exist. Whatever was left of CNN's credibility is now gone. The reference to the source, of course, is to an apparently fraudulent CNN story that claimed the president was aware of the now famous Russia lawyer meeting at Trump Tower before it took place. Lenny Davis, the lawyer representing Michael Cohen, now concedes he was the source of the story and he admits he has no evidence it's actually true. That's bad for CNN, obviously. CNN, for its part, has refused comment on its own dishonesty. Mark Stein is a best-selling author and a genius at sorting things out, and he joins us to do that. Mark, you saw the tweet storm? Your response? Yeah. Well, I think it's always a good idea, Tucker, when the president gets the media talking about themselves. Uh, I, I saw Howard Kurtz earlier, and Howard's analysis makes sense in media terms, but I think out in the wider world, uh, the reality is that uh, the media are, in all, people loathe the media, uh, even more than politicians, and they especially loathe the media when they're talking about themselves. So if you can get Carl Bernstein uh, talking politics pompously and ponderously about how he has spent whatever it is 60 years quote bringing the truth to light unquote while he's summering at Sag Harbor uh, which I gather is like Sag Harbor is uh, some broken down old lobsterman's decrepit village somewhere way up the coast nobody's ever heard of but anyway Carl Bernstein's, <laughs> Carl Bernstein's summering at Sag Harbor announcing that he's bringing the truth to light uh, every time you can get the media to stand on their own portentousness, um, then I think that's a win for the president. But is it, though? Because there's nothing that the press likes to talk about more than itself. I mean, mm. this is self-involvement on parade. I mean, this right. is like free therapy right. for most reporters who need it. So do they, I mean, everybody wins, it seems like. Well, yes, but I think actually, I think this is one thing where people do agree with him, that what that they feel the, the media do not actually give him a fair shake. So actually, for example, everyone's saying, oh, no, there was nothing wrong with that NBC thing. There was nothing wrong with it, except that it's one of those over-edited interviews in which the bits they take out are as revealing as anything they leave in. And the president has a, has a uh, point on that. And I, I think it's actually very reasonable uh, to raise uh, the way these things are edited and why they're edited in that way. As for the Lanny Davis thing, I understand Lanny Davis uh, thrice denied he was the source for the CNN story. When I first heard the CNN story, I thought it was rubbish because Michael Cohen is now being forced to lie about everything he's been doing uh, for the previous quarter century. Uh, so the government star witness is a, a, a liar whose uh, deal is conditioning, conditioning on these new lies. So I thought Lanny Davis was just passing on his clients' lies. But in fact, he's lying about what the liar uh, lied to him about that day. So it's, 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 it, it's actually, even by CNN media source standards, it's falling apart, that one. It's metal lying. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you're old enough, like me, to mm -hmm. remember a time when political analysts said things like, what American voters really want mm -hmm. is authenticity and transparency in their politics. Here we have a president 
who's literally tweeting in his bedroom early morning yeah. saying things like CNN sucks. Right, now right. that's the most authentic and <laughs> transparent yeah. thing a president has ever yeah, yeah. done, yeah. and yet the media hate it. Well, that, that's right, because they are, that, well, this isn't the way a president behaves. What he's supposed to do is he's, he's supposed to, uh, his minders are supposed to focus group CNN sucks for six weeks, uh, and then a spokesman will come out at a podium and read out a press release saying that CNN sucks. The fact that he wakes up and thinks that CNN sucks, and then he goes, CNN sucks. Uh, he's, not do he's, he's not doing it right, and they can't stand that. And <laughs> and, and you're right, this is actually, you can complain about a lot of things, but this is like actually being plugged into Trump's brain when he wakes up in the morning. And they can and after asking for unfiltered, unauthentic uh, uh, politicians who aren't in the bubble, this guy isn't in the bubble. He's out of the bubble, taking the tire iron to them, and they can't stand it. <laughs> it's hilarious. I have so many mixed feelings about all this. <laughs> But I will say, I agree with you, I will never again sit and listen to some pompous guy on TV say, what voters really want is authenticity. Voters no. may want it, the media doesn't. Mark Stein, great to see you. Oh, as thanks, always. thanks, Tucker. You've spent years bringing the truth to light, too. We should all talk pompously like Carl Bernstein. <laughs> what a fraudulent character. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mark. Nice.